everyone. This is Shirley from Shirley's World. I don't know if anybody saw that I was, I scheduled this uh, like 20 minutes ago or 25 minutes ago. I don't know if it came up for anybody, but uh, it's not, I don't think it's when you get notified. I don't understand the notifications at all, but anyway. This is my weekly What's Sold video. And uh, I'll wait till some people come in here so I'm not talking to myself. Uh, my sister just told me that my mother's father, my grandpa Vorp, his name was, uh, he would have been 134 years old this today. It was his birthday. I don't know how she keeps track of all this stuff. She must have the albums. <laughs> uh, I have no idea about birthdays. I have trouble even keeping track of my own kids' birthdays. So I don't know. Sue, I think when you get here, I think somebody's birthday is May 14th. Is that Julie's birthday? I have to ask you when you come on here. Um, that date rings a bell. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, May is, there's lots of things in May. My son's birthday was May 1st. My birthday was May 4th. My sister's anniversary, I believe, was May 7th. And that's all I know for sure. Uh, anyway, it's Mother's Day. And I thought about, should I come on here? Because people are going to be probably having dinners or, of course, during this time, nobody's getting together. So... Then I decide I'm not going to change the date. That just gets everybody even more mixed up as to when I'm coming on and when I'm not coming on. So anyway, happy Mother's Day to everybody out there that's a mother. Uh, either mother to kids or mothers to animals. My, my daughter feels like she uh, is a mother. She has loads of cats. She had dogs. She has a horse, you know. So she's a fur baby mommy. So. Anyway, I didn't send out any Mother's Day cards. I mean, I don't send out cards. I send out American Greetings e-cards. I didn't even do that today. Uh, I don't know who will be the first one on here. I don't know. Maybe everybody's busy with uh, Mother's Day things, dinners or whatever. I did remind my, I did put a reminder on about this. Uh, I don't know when I put it on. There you are, Sue. I was wondering if maybe, um, now, Grandma's was August 5th. That's what maybe made you name Jennifer since her birthday was August 7th. Okay. Yeah, what was Grandma's whole name? It was a real long name and we'd always ask her her name and she'd spew out this long she had like five names not from divorces i mean that's jay just named her all these extra names uh, is it jenna margareta sophia Something like that. <laughs> it was a long list of uh, names she had. J 
Janetta, Margareta, Sophia, Hummel, Vor. I think that was it, right? Do I have that right? Yeah, Janetta, Margareta, Sophia, and then Hummel would be her maiden name, Vor. Right, I got that. We heard it so often. That's why I remembered it. Hi, Bumblebee. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, August. Okay, not May. Uh, but you said Grandpa's uh, today. Grandpa's. birthday would have been today and he would have been 134 years old. Isn't that what you just told me? The an email? Or an uh, text. Yeah. I forgot to turn off my phone so I'm, I'm hoping Michelle should be at the barn. She shouldn't be calling at this time. Uh, I already texted her back and forth about Mother's Day. Uh, I asked her and uh, Deanna to uh, keep an eye out for any Lysol hand wipes. I can't find them. There's not one, I don't think, in Medina at all. Nothing that I can even order. So they've seen them, and they've gotten them different places where she, the suburb she lives in, so they're going to look for some for me. I mean, I've been out for a couple weeks. They're just very convenient. I know there's other things you can use. Yeah. I do. I use soap and water. I keep a basin of uh, soap and water, uh, Dawn dish detergent, a real bubbly container full of this and I brag in my sink. And that's what I wipe things off with, everything. I mean, I can even wash my hands in there if I want. But when I wash my hands, I usually do it with regular bar soap, because so I do it for the 20 minutes. And then, of course, there's always, my sister calls this my new perfume, my, per, my Purell. I, uh, I have lots of these little bottles of Purell. I never realized how many I had. Uh, I've, I must have for a while, I must have just, every time I went through the travel size of things, uh, I'd pick them up. <clears throat> but anyway, I have a lot of them, which is good for now. Uh, yes, happy Mother's Day to you, Bumblebee, for sure. Yes, Bumblebee has her two sons at home from college. <laughs> uh, at least they're home with you. You know, a lot of people can't even see their kids because of this thing. You know, I can't see my kids. I can't see, well, Michelle could come over uh, and we could go on the deck but it's freezing cold out again. The day she came over for my birthday, it was sort of warm. But uh, today it's cold. I know she's at the barn anyway, being a mommy to her horse. Uh, I'll have to call my, uh, my daughter-in-law already texted me and wished me a happy Mother's Day, and I texted her back times two because she has her two little kids at home. My grandkids are at home, of course, during this, but they're all they're at least all at home. Uh, so yeah. I started um, <clears throat> I didn't start to watch. It's always it's always on in the background. Uh, the news or the TV.
but I haven't been watching um, anything but local news. Usually I just watch it in the morning uh, quickly about mostly the weather. For wipes, you just buy a cylinder of regular baby wipes and pour in your favorite scent of Lysol. Ah. Does just regular Lysol in the bottle have alcohol in it, though? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I don't have any bottles of Lysol. I have Lysol spray. It's the disinfectant spray. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I forgot what I was talking about. That's how quickly it goes. <laughs> so if you say something and I want to answer but don't, it's because I have to continue going on with the thought that I was going with. Uh, I don't know what I was talking about. But <clears throat> I don't know. I have homemade soup out there that I got out of the freezer uh, that I'm going to have. Um, I got it out yesterday. I had some yesterday, and I'll have some today. Homemade soup. It was the uh, pantry soup with ground turkey in it. And then yesterday I made myself a tomato sandwich. Well, it was it was actually a cheese sandwich with tomato on it to go with it. So I'll probably do the same thing today. I got a uh, Aldi grocery delivery yesterday, was it, or the day before? A lot of fresh vegetables and fruits. And then today... <clears throat> I had to go and pick up, do a curbside pickup at a little grocery store um, that I've never done a pickup at before. So it's Bueller's, which I love that grocery store, but I don't know. I just started doing the curbside at the bigger store before. But anyway, the reason why I ordered a second time was because Aldi didn't have any batteries. My scale that I met that I weigh everything on eBay with the batteries gave out finally after I don't know three years. <laughs> These it takes three triple A batteries. Of course, I have all double A. I have a million double A batteries. No triple A. So I had to go on the hunt for triple A batteries. So uh, Aldi didn't have them. They were out of them. So I had to order a couple things. I just ordered some of Bueller's Fresh Bread and a couple other things. They didn't have Lysol wipes, though. And uh, uh, so they came, or I went and picked that up at 11 o'clock this morning. So I have batteries back in my scale. Everything is good. The only, I do have a second scale, but it, that second scale weighs really heavy things. I got it when I was selling on eBay or on Amazon, and you had to weigh the boxes that you would send in, and they were always like 30 pounds or something. So I needed a big scale that sat on the floor and then had an extension of the reader uh, that you could see, but it's not accurate enough for smaller items. It tells you the pounds, but it doesn't count. Tell you, it'll tell you the ounces, but not like it won't tell you like seven point something, so that you know to go to the next, uh, you know, I the next to, to the eight pounds. So. The few things I did weigh on there, if it told me seven ounces, I just charged eight. I just put on eight ounces because 
I think that's how it probably works. <coughs> uh, so my scale is back into working order now, but I have nothing to list. <laughs> but Bumblebee, I'm going to get a box from Bumblebee. Uh, I don't know when, soon. <laughs> Maybe this next week sometime. And I have a, a Thread Up box coming. A mystery box of just assorted clothing. Now that'll be a mystery. That's a real mystery box. So I don't know. It could be anything. I hope it's something, a few good things anyway. And then I'm still really thinking about contacting the wholesale ninja place and ordering a small box of health and beauty items. I think that's the one I'll try. Uh because I sold another health and beauty thing. I'll show it to you. So anyway, it doesn't look like anybody else is coming on. It's just us three ladies here. So I'm going to show you what I sold. The funny thing about this is it's exactly the same amount of eBay items, a dozen, that I've had for the last couple of weeks. And this is the first week that I have... Uh, no best offers on anything, okay? I have been sending out offers to watchers, and a few of these are that, but uh, the others are either sale items just because I'm running sales. I think I have to run sales uh, during when you don't have uh, make an offer, you know, best offer on things. So I may... Uh, up my sale to a little higher percentage. Uh, what I would like to do is, I think you can bulk edit your items to move all the prices up a percentage or two, a little bit, and then when you drop it down to a bigger percent off. I've never done that, so I may sort of look into how you do that, because I think that's what most... Uh, a lot of sellers do. So let, is, let me share my screen and show you uh, what I sold. <clears> Hope <throat> oh, I did that the wrong way again. Let me come back here and do that the right way here location window there and there okay there we go okay uh, the first thing was an eBay sale and it was a J crew this was a new with tags uh, black label this was a pretty summery white eyelet uh, long sleeve blouse and it sold for a best off or not a best offer an offer to watchers I sent out for 19. 77 and that's what sold 1977 and it went to Alamo California Alamo and that sold on last Sunday on my birthday and another one that sold on last Sunday <clears throat> was a pair of booty shorts by BKE which is a buckle brand these were the style Peyton, and they were size 26, just tiny little shorts. Uh, they were distressed and uh, just, just five pocket jeans, nothing fancy, no rhinestones or anything. And those I sent out a best, an offer to watchers for 1977 again, and that's what they bought those for. So then we have an LL Bean. <clears throat> uh, women's small whoop women's small size small cotton striped blue and white long sleeve sort of a nautical look top and uh, that was an offer to watchers again and that sold on Monday it's Monday the 5th no on Tuesday I'm sorry 
Those others sold on Monday, not Sunday. These This sold on Tuesday. And um, it sold for Offer to Watchers for 1977. Because that's anything ending in a 77. That's how I know it was an Offer to Watchers. So I'm, I was thinking to myself, well, since I don't have best offer, nobody's buying anything except if I send offers out. That's what it seemed like for a minute. But then this next one was Jamaica Jacks. This was a men's extra large Hawaiian style uh, short sleeve silk shirt, all silk. And that sold for a sale price of $16.14. So it was an inexpensive price for a silk shirt. And uh, they paid shipping, $4 shipping on that. And it went where? To Huntington Beach, California. The others went to Pleasanton, California, and to Sour Lake, Texas, is where the booty shorts went to. They went to Texas. This went to was another California sale. That's three California sales. Okay. Here's an Adidas uh, white athletic shorts. They were the Clima 365 elastic waist and they sold sale price of $15.29 and they went to Konawa, Konawa, Oklahoma. So let's, now we have an ASICS um, top. These are all eBay sales. Uh, this was an AS, um, ASICS women's small or women's medium full zip uh, sweatshirt type top and that went for an offer to watchers again and it went to Niagara Falls, New York. <clears throat> they paid shipping of uh, six dollars on that because it was kind of heavy. So here's my one health and beauty item I sold was a bottle of Step one shampoo was a color defense by infusion. Infusion 23, it's called. It was a big 16 ounce uh, bottle. And I sold that for $19.99. There was no sale on those. And it went to Peabody, Maine, and it was free shipping. So it did cost me $7.52 off of that to ship out. But a lot of, I would say, probably most health and beauty items that are on, I've been keeping an eye on them, uh, they do go free shipping. So I had to uh, keep that in mind when I was putting the price on that. Here's a uh, basketball, new Chicago Bulls, long sleeve, extra large, uh, team t-shirt it was sort of stretchy in a red and gray had a spell out on the back i believe no it didn't huh wonder what i said oh it was on the sleeve on the sleeves it had a spell out <clears throat> and that went for 16.99 that was a sale price and I have no idea why I only charged three dollars on that because it cost me four dollars to send it out. I usually charge four fifty in shipping. This must have been in my inventory a long time, and I didn't see that when I was going through looking at listings, so I lost an extra dollar on that. But um, went to Teton Falls, New Jersey. Here's a Poshmark sale. It was a pair of Born seven and a half slip-on clogs. They were sort of pretty. They had this um, sort of shiny, sparkly almost looking pattern to them. And the person, now I don't have best offer. I took best offer off of 
eBay to avoid lowballers. Well, this person ended up being starting these way down at $6 or something. So I thought I try to get off of doing that on eBay and here it's going to happen, of course, on Poshmark sometimes. But anyway, it sold, they did sell for $16. They went to Clarksville, Tennessee and, um, out of that 16, I made $12.80 on these shoes, which most shoes I never pay over $5, some $4 at my goodwill. So, okay, here is a Chico's Travelers Women's. This is one of that's those stretchy, slinky type tops. Uh, this was a short sleeve one, though, in a large, extra large with a scoop neck. And that sold for, as an offer to watchers again for 1977. They paid the shipping of 450. And that went to Atlanta, Georgia. And then we have another Poshmark sale here. This was uh, this blue hoodie sweatshirt in a size small. It was a Victoria's Secret pink, and it had uh, the Victoria's Secret on the back here. It said peace and love on the back. And um, <clears throat> that went for only $9. I had this as a... Um, I think I only had 10 or 11 or 10 or 11 dollars on this to begin with, and they came back at, at nine dollars. And this had been well, it says well loved, that means it probably had some pilling on and this and that. But, um, and the, the graphic on the back was a little bit cracked, like that gra uh, printing does get after it's older. So I took $9 for that, and I made $6.05 on that little shirt. Hardly worth the uh, listing. Now here's a Snoop this Snoopy and Friends. This is a big wool sweater. And um, this was the cutest graphic on here uh, of Snoopy and the little birdie. What was his name? Uh, Oh dear, it's on the tip of my tongue. What is the little birdie's name? <laughs> uh, can't think of it right now. You're probably telling me, but I can't see your, uh, I can't see it. So anyway, uh, this sold for $27. They did give me a low offer to begin with, and then I countered back, and then he countered at 27 because I think I had maybe $30 on this, so 27 was okay. And out of that, I made $21.06, or 60 cents, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a nice, uh, but this is a warm, woolly sweater in the middle of, well, spring, supposed to be spring, <laughs> uh, going into summertime. So now here's my one Mercari sale. This is one of my salt and pepper shakers. This was, these were tall. They were like six inches tall, pretty tall. And uh, they were just brown, plain brown, a rooster and, an, uh, and a hen. And they sold for $10, and I earned $9 on those. And they went to Chesapeake, Virginia. <clears throat> then here's Ellie Tahari, a women's a medium knit top. This was kind of stretchy and uh, kind of a thin, thin top. Had a, it was a linen blend, and that sold for... Uh, $16.99, the sale price. They paid $4.50 in shipping, and it went to Berkeley, California. 
another California sale. And we have a pair of Ralph Lauren. These were new with tags, these uh, men's running shorts. They were an extra, extra large. And uh, those went for the sale price of $18.69. And they went to East Morkai, New York. Morkai's? East Morkai's, New York. Uh, and they had free shipping on them. So I paid $4 shipping because they're just lightweight. But they went to uh, right up to New York. And then the last thing was an eBay sale of this Mimi Chica, this large little uh, size large. It was a mini dress, just a really short little dress, but it was sheer uh, with an elastic type waist. It had horses all over uh, all over it. That's probably what caught my eye. I think I bought that, right? Uh, it buttoned to the waist, I see here. Like the blouse. Had cap sleeves. Sort of different. And it sold for an offer to watchers for $17.77. And it went to Louisville, Kentucky. Ah, the horse country. So that's why it sold. I see, I see. Okay, let's come back here. <clears throat> well, where am I? There I am. Okay, isn't that funny that I didn't do any different on uh, when I dropped the best offer, except if I hadn't put offers to watchers out there, I would have had much, you know, fewer sales. So it definitely works. I haven't done it yet today. I haven't gone on eBay and uh, you go on your active listings and then you go up and you see they'll, there's a button you can push for eligible for offers and you push that and it lists them. And if it's anything over $20, I usually send out a an offer sometimes not a big difference but Woodstock yes thank you Bumblebee <laughs> that would have bothered me why well, I couldn't think you know I was on one other time to mention that probably when I listed it I couldn't think of the birdies name either yes Woodstock I have to think of Woodstock uh, my daughter had had uh, said that she read that sometime back during Woodstock time, I, I don't know what year that was, but she had read sometime there was another virus going around at that time. I was going to look it up and forgot completely about doing it. But there was another big virus going along, around, and nobody paid any attention to it. Nobody shut down anything, and Woodstock went on during that time. That huge gathering. But I don't know any of the uh, statistics about it. I don't know what virus it was. This, of course, is an altogether different type of virus. This is so contagious. Now, I, oh, I know what I was starting to say. I usually listen to just the local news. I try not to listen to the news at all because it just makes me depressed and freaks me out. And so I thought, well, I ought to once in a while listen to CNN. I know the, the president doesn't want you to listen to CNN, but, you know, I'm not doing what the president wants. <laughs> Uh, he's all for opening up the country, and I believe, in my heart, I believe he wants the most, the biggest reason he wants to open the country up is so that he doesn't, it's because uh, November elections are coming. He doesn't want 
everything to be in the toilet, you know, at election time because he won't get reelected. And I really think that's why he's pushing so hard about the opening things up. So I did go <clears throat> on CNN, and Ohio is one of the ones that is opening things. I mean, it's almost like 90% partially, well, partially opened, but 90%, it will be like 90% open by the end of May or the middle of May. And so I went on CNN and you want to hear some scary statistics and hear, hear from all kinds of scientists and all kinds of doctors and how it really is in the country. It's just mind boggling. And of course this did make me upset and depressed and decide that I should probably never go out <laughs> again. Uh, my daughter thinks I need to go out a little bit, just a little bit to keep my immune system up. Uh, CNN is not for you to listen to. Well, Sue, I think that you should bite the bullet and no matter what, I think you should listen to CNN one day, just one day, listen to it. I think you should. Francis June, hi. Well, thank you, Francis. Uh, yes, same to you. Do you have kids? If you have kids, happy Mother's Day, or animals, same thing. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm glad you stopped by. Uh, he wants people to be able to go back to work. Yes, he does, but there's an ulterior motive with him. I truly believe that. But I don't want to get into politics because that's not good. <clears throat> Bumblebee, more are suffering with no income than catching the virus, even though the virus is very bad. Whoop. The economy is on the verge of never recovering. Right. But if we have another wave of this virus and things have to shut down all over again, we will be for sure in a depression. So if I'm for them opening up, but they have to do it slow, really, really slow. And the places that are still having, you know, gaining, having deaths, their deaths are going up every day. And, they're, and uh, the number of cases, of course, that depends on how much they're testing. Until they have enough testing out to really test, uh, lots and lots and lots of people. I think they should take this really slow. <clears throat> I'm too, you sh my sister says I'm too scared about everything. I wash my hands every 20 minutes. And yeah, I, I don't do that in the house. I don't think I've washed my hands except in that stuff where I cleaned off my counter, and I'll tell you why I had to do that. Uh, when I brought the groceries in, when I picked those up, I haven't used Purell one time today. <laughs> uh, hi, Grace. <clears throat> yes, yeah, CNN is scary. <clears throat> uh, I'm not so sure about the lying business. I know that's what the president wants you to think. But CNN is what we all watch to get the real news about the war, about the about the about when the towers fell. It's where everybody went to for the news. So why is this any different? No. Mm. 
Well, it's true he has the election on his mind. Some people just shouldn't go out, right? CNN has changed. I don't know. I'm not convinced of that. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to it every day, I'll tell you, because it is it is depressing and it's scary. <clears throat> However, now the virus is in the White House and the president still doesn't have a mask on, which I think that is very wrong for him not to have a mask on when he makes these public things. You tune in once a day just to check in. Too much news triggers grab uh, anxiety. Oh, I know. It does me too. So, yeah, yesterday when I watched a lot of it, I was quite anxious. Today I'm back to uh, watching a Netflix movie. <laughs> I couldn't even concentrate. I tried to watch a Netflix movie last night. I couldn't even concentrate on the movie. So, yeah, too much news is not good. But I think you should tune in once in a while. Uh, three of the big doctors in uh, President Trump's uh, group are self-quarantined themselves now. So... Don't you think he ought to have a mask on? I mean, he is the president. We can't have him getting sick. Uh, the owner has told his journalist to do whatever is necessary to make the president look bad. The owner of CNN, you mean? Well, I definitely think they are geared toward uh, liberalism and uh, more democratic, more de democratic party, of course. I mean, you can see that, but I'm talking, if you look over that, you know, yeah. So anyway, let me tell you why I had to clean my counters this morning. <laughs> I came down this morning and went to the sink and I had at least a hundred or more tiny little sugar ants all over the place, in my sink, on the counter, whatever. Now, there's way too many to be, you know, killing with my finger. So you want to spray them with something. I mean, there's that many, you know, you need to spray them. I won't use like Raid or something. It's, it's. I won't use it in the kitchen, and I it's a, I can't stand the smell of it, number one. And I won't use it in the kitchen. So what I had was a bottle of Windex with vinegar. That's what I clean things with a lot. Windows and sometimes lots of different things. It's a good cleaner. And so I thought, well, I'm going to try this. So I squirted it, the, the Windex with vinegar, the vinegar cleaner. I squirted it on the ants, and they curled right up and died. So there, that's a good non-toxic, well, it's toxic to the ants, non-toxic uh, ant killer. So I sprayed it. I moved things because they were hiding under things, and they came running out. I sprayed everything down and got rid of most of the ants, except Still, when I move something out there, one will come running. So they're still around, and who knows where their nest is or whatever you call it, their little colony. It's hiding somewhere. But I'm just wondering, it's it's probably because I brought in a lot of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables yesterday. Even though they went right into the sink, and I washed them all. And but they're sitting out now on this tiered uh, wire uh, container. And I bought way too many tomatoes. 
I don't know how I'm going to eat all these tomatoes. I need to do something with these tomatoes. I need to cut them out, up and make salsa or something uh, out of these tomatoes real quick because they're going to go bad because they're bright red. They're the ones on the vine. I think they're just hydrophonic tomatoes. They're not even grown in real dirt. <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, no raid for me. No, ever. <clears throat> Wait, you said you shouldn't kill any little critters. I know. I can't take every little ant outside, though. <laughs> they were running all over the place. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, today you're realizing Nancy Pelosi is missing in action as she's third in line to the presidency if Trump and Pence are taken out with, the, with COVID. Probably their plan all along. Whose plan? <laughs> uh, Pelosi. God, maybe she's uh, maybe she's testing positive. Who knows? I haven't uh, seen her. Right, you haven't seen her lately. It's interesting. <clears throat> Why did I buy so many? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't think the tomatoes, number one, usually when you buy the tomatoes on the vine, they're like this big. They're tiny little tomatoes. These tomatoes are each like this, and there's four each. So I have eight tomatoes. Well, I ate one yesterday. Made made tomato sandwiches. But I have to do something with the rest of these. They will just come marching again. <laughs> Dear, look at where'd you find that little emoji of the ants? The Democrats' plan. <laughs> Sue says Pelosi's too mean for the virus. I don't know. Yes, it's a sign of spring and all the rain, the ants. I did not have my perimeter sprayed. Uh, usually I have, because I had the problem of yellow jackets in my wall one year. Every year the bee guy would come and spray uh, around my where bees go, they can get in on the on the uh, corners of your house and along uh, where the gutters are. They look for cracks to get into the under the siding. So every year in April, I would have him come out and spray, and then spray the perimeter. They spray the perimeter of your house. It keeps ants out and everything else. Well, this year I didn't have him do it. Because the more I thought about it, the more, you know, you read about the, um, the honeybees. Now, I don't think this killer will just kill yellow jackets. I think it'll kill any type of bees. It'll kill ants. It'll kill anything like that. So I did not have it done this year. Because I am really concerned about the, the uh, honeybees. So I'm the yard with all the dandelions, and I live surrounded by a golf course, which there's not one. So there's all this green manicured grass on three of my sides, and then there's me with all these pretty yellow dandelions. But that's okay. My yard every Wednesday gets uh, cut by my mower guy. But the, my dandelions are still all out here in my garden. And, uh, yeah. So dandelions aren't really a They're called a weed. 
but they're actually food. I mean, you can eat them. You can eat all parts of a dandelion. Uh, they are bitter because I've tried doing dandelion greens in salads, and they are bitter, but they're no more bitter than uh, kale. Kale is very bitter, too. Uh, but if you put a, a few in along with romaine lettuce and other things, it's okay. Uh, slice them and freeze them between layers of wax paper. Use to top, top of a frozen pizza. Use to top a frozen pizza. Oh, okay. I have a frozen pizza that I got from Aldi yesterday. It's in my freezer. I always love to have pizza on hand. Your husband always follows their little trail back to the entrance point and sprays outside at the edge of the foundation. Yeah, I have no idea. They're probably coming from under my sink. But the, since I had my kitchen redone, that's all so closed in under there. Of course, where the pipes come up, they could come up, crawl up the pipes, I guess. But I don't know where in the foundation, uh, the little tiny, these are little tiny sugar ants. And I won't put those little traps out either. The traps, like, even the boric acid uh, and sugar traps, because if you have cats, here's what happens. They play with them. They knock them off onto the floor, and the dog eats them. That's not good either. So I quit getting them a long time ago. So... I'm glad that I found this uh, Windex and vinegar. Maybe just vinegar would work. Or maybe it's the uh, little bit of ammonia in with the uh, Windex. You don't think bees will be at the edge of your foundation. That's They came in at the corner, up at the corner <clears throat> of the foundation of the house. That's how they got in the year I had them in my one whole wall of my dining room was buzzing with a huge yellow jacket nest. By the time I realized what had happened, I called the bee guy. That's when I first met him. And he listened to the wall and showed me how big the hive was. It was freaky. <laughs> so he put his whole outfit on to do this. <clears throat> and what he did was he opened up the, the uh, electric plates, like where you, you know, you turn on the lights and that. He opened those up, and sh sh that's where he shot in the stuff, wherever, the fog or whatever it was. And he says, go in the other room because they're going to be flying out of here. So... <clears throat> The ones that weren't killed immediately were trying to get away, and they were flying out of there. That's why he had a suit on and flying in the dining room until they just dropped. Because it's, it's like instant kill, almost, whatever it is that they use. And they were yellow jackets. They were hornets. They weren't bees, of course. They were hornets. And ever since then is when I started getting this sprayer guy come back another thing he will come back now if i get ground bees they're they're not a bumblebee they're not a uh, honeybee either and they are mean <laughs> those ground bees yeah i get them every once in a while there's two or three places where they come and my mower guy won't even mow if until i call the bee guy if there's if there's there are any around, so. <clears throat> you use Windex on countertops too. It's the ammonia. Yeah, it's probably the ammonia. Mm. 
Yeah, but I don't think that, I don't think it'll uh, kill the virus. I don't think. I haven't heard anything out there about vinegar won't do it. So I don't know about ammonia. But I haven't heard that it's it's also good for the virus or not. But what else was I? Yeah. Oh, I had my first uh, tick encounter. <laughs> Usually it's on the horses that I have to remove a tick. Especially Echo. He gets them right here on his forelock, right on the skin, right on his forehead right here on his forelock. And they're easy to feel. And you, how you do it is you pull. I don't know if anybody's ever done this. I don't know if you're city people or country people. But uh, you get a tweezers and you gently get a hold of the tick on his body. And you slowly pull it out. You don't want to break off the head because then that will they will send toxins into the animal. So you gently pull it out so that you have the whole little tick in your tweezers. And there it is, little legs twitching and twirling. And then you're supposed to drop it in alcohol. <clears throat> and this, so anyway, I, I was... Dexter was on the couch with me and I was petting him, petting his ears because they're like velvet, you know, and I felt something hard. So I look and there's a tick on his ear. So I go get the tweezers and he sat real good for me. I pulled it out slowly and it all came out in one piece. And <clears throat> I thought I'd try because I've always just put them on a cement and stomped them dead with my foot but I thought I'd try the alcohol thing so I put some alcohol in a jar and I dropped it in the alcohol and there it is just swimming around in the alcohol I thought it would be like an instant death to the tick no then I read later on because that wasn't fast enough for me I read later on that it takes a long time for them to die in the alcohol. So I just went out and I poured the alcohol out on the cement garage floor and stomped and stomped on it to death. So that was my first tick encounter of the year. So they're around everywhere, you know. Uh, I told you about the ants, uh, the best offer, the CNN, and the scale. Oh, before I was listening today, every day I listen to uh, some YouTube videos, something that's uh, sort of high posh planet, <laughs> better late than never. Uh, and Cafe Lily, hi. Good to see y'all. Uh, yeah. Today I was listening to Suzanne A. Wells. Uh, I have her, I'm part of her premium content uh, group, of which she puts out a huge amount of education for, for her group. It's $20 a month to be in this group, but you get so much information. Sometimes I don't listen to it for a month, and then I have all this stuff to catch up on. So I was listening today about books, different books uh, that are good to resell. Most of the stuff I sort of knew from selling on Amazon. When I first started selling on Amazon, I sold books, and now I don't do Amazon anymore. But... Uh, then I listen to uh, about consumables because I'm thinking, really thinking about getting some health and beauty items from a uh, wholesaler. So I was listening about the consumer stuff and so interesting. And she goes, 
she goes through all different departments of stuff. She has, so it's so interesting. And things about what she's done about hair color. If women, uh, these are good to find, this hair color stuff she was talking about, it's good to find in estate sales. These old, out of date, and out of, uh, that they don't sell anymore. Colors of Clairol, colors of uh, all different kinds of hair color. Because women, a lot of women that are used to buying this one kind of hair color, they don't want to switch to another color. They don't want to switch to another brand. Uh, they want that same one and they pay she sold hair color for like $80 for a box of a discontinued old, older uh, type of Clairol. And the same is true with a lot of different brands of things, of different uh, items. And where you can find that the best is not from wholesalers. That's more for if you go into estate sales and you go head to the bathroom where they have, uh, if it's a big estate sale, and they're trying to get rid of everything from grandma's linen closet. <laughs> and there'll be loads of stuff like that. And that's where uh, you get uh, the older things. But there's way of uh, stores... Uh, sell things that are going out of date or the company isn't selling anymore. And there's all kinds of information on this. And it's her premium content of uh, information. It's, she, it's content about everything. It's not just. She's been a reseller on eBay for, I think she said, 15 or 18 years. It's a huge, it's, it's a long time. So... She's a smart lady. So that's what I was listening to uh, earlier today. And uh, I think the rest of the day, I will probably put some offer to watchers out uh, on eBay. Maybe do some revamping of my listings. Maybe some switching some things over from eBay that aren't on Poshmark that I think would do well on Poshmark. And I have things that could go on to Mercari too. So I don't know. I have a lot to do. And when I get tired of doing that, I will go continue watching the movie that I started watching and couldn't concentrate on before. <laughs> so anyway. That is what I'm going to be doing the rest of the day. I hope everybody has a happy Mother's Day. And my sister is probably left to go eat her uh, dinner, which, oh, Sue, you're still here? Yeah, you're still here. Uh, didn't your dinner come yet? You're getting dinner from where again? Oh, almost time for Chris and Austin to make the Olive Garden pickup. Oh, they're going to go pick it up. Okay. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. We don't have an Olive Garden in Medina. That's one thing we don't have. Uh, Posh Planet. Oh, that's okay. You can go back and listen. <laughs> Uh, yes, happy Mother's Day to everybody, and uh, I will be on Wednesday for sure. I've changed my Wednesday times now to 4 o'clock, just like this Sunday times. So all my times will be 4 o'clock, unless I record a video about this and that, and that could be on any time. You just have to depend on getting a notification. So if anybody's on here that hasn't subscribed, I don't think there are, uh, please subscribe and push the little bell so you get notified. 
At least you'll get notified sometime during the uh, broadcast. Sometime it's not before or, or right when I come on. But I'm going to try to go on and announce myself a couple hours beforehand. So I will see you all Wednesday for sure and maybe before. So stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands. Use use your hand sanitizers if you go out. Don't touch your face. That is probably the most important part. Don't touch your face and wear your mask. I've sent for some masks. Since my sewing machine is broke, it kills me to have to buy these because they would be so easy for me to make. And my sewing machine's broken. So I did buy some different kinds, different things. So they'll be coming in the next week or two. And my box, my boxes will be coming sometime, um, maybe in the next week or so. Uh, I don't know when. It's always a surprise. <laughs> so if they come, I will do a box opening. So bye for now. I do have a needle and thread. I am not going to hand sew these masks. Yeah. I was even looking at how they, somebody made some out of a sock. <laughs> I have to go back and look at that. Because I do have some short socks. I don't wear short socks anymore. I wear uh, knee socks. So um, I have some sh short white socks, cotton socks. I have to look into that and see how they did that. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you again. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.